Well, ladies and gentlemen of the First Mint, I want to say to start the show that I appreciate all the feedback that you've sent in over the last few weeks. The new format of the pod, the more investigative and storytelling-based narrative, will be somewhat discontinued going forward in favor of the interview-style shows that we did over the summer. Now, we'll continue to focus on sports, entertainment, and of course, the hard numbers of crypto, and occasionally, we will definitely deep dive into a project or topic to make sure to uncover what's really going on, like we did with the Autograph podcast. The reality is that it's really hard to be solo on a podcast, and having a guest through the bulk of the episode is both fun and honestly just easier on the ears. We want to share new perspectives and viewpoints at the first minute, especially right now during this downtrend. So we're getting back to it. And you might also start hearing more from my brother, the real Phil D, very soon. Today's episode, or should I say interview, is with Micah Johnson, one of the highest selling NFT artists in the world. He created a collection called Aku Dreams, which was recently featured on the cover of Time Magazine and has traded for over 14,000 ETH on the secondary. Micah is one of the faces of Web3. But his origin story as an artist is an unlikely one. He is a former Major League Baseball player, having broken into the majors in 2015 and retired just three years later, but not before one of his coaches, Los Angeles Dodgers manager Dave Roberts, asked him to showcase a talent for the team. Not knowing what to do or say, Micah said that he would paint something, and his talent was born. In the years following his career, he painted relentlessly in his garage in North Carolina, determined to make it a career and make it he did. On this episode, Micah tells me that story, and then we dovetail into a general discussion about being a creator, how he makes time for creating versus running a business, about being all in on something when you really want it, which kind of turns into talking about the Olympics, and we even find time to touch on FTX and whether NFTs can actually really scale into live sports. And for our faithful listeners, we finally welcome the return of Would You Rather. So after the jump, have a listen to my interview with Micah Johnson. What's up, everyone? It's LG Set, and you're listening to The First Mint, a podcast about Web3, business, and sports. Before we get to the show, a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Evaluate.xyz, a safe and easy way to meet other NFT collectors, negotiate deals, and swap your moments live. Looking to expand your top shot all day and strike collection without spending your dapper balance? With Evaluate, you can pair up with trading partners in seconds and swap your existing moments for new ones in secure trading lobbies. The fastest and easiest way to trade NFTs. Visit Evaluate.xyz today to start swapping moments with other collectors. Nothing on today's show should be considered financial or trading advice of any kind. Please do your own thorough research and make your own trading decisions. This is not advice. Mike Johnson, dude. Been waiting to have you on the show for a long time, been following your progress, and we are very honored to have you at the First Mint. Welcome to the show. Well, appreciate you guys having me, man. Finally, Dude, I'm glad I, I passed your guys' test to get on. <laughs> the test? Oh, yeah, I haven't even heard of this test. I didn't even know there was a test, <laughs> but I, I'd be keen to know if I pass my own test, if there is one. <laughs> uh, but, dude, for for in the, you know, there might be people on the sh- listen to the show who actually may not know who you are and what you're doing in Web3 and in NFTs. So, you know, let, tell us, tell it to us like we're somebody meeting you at a party. Like we're just like, hey, what do you do, sir? Uh, what, do, what, do you, what do you do with your life? Oh, you're some kind of artist, like some kind of a former athlete. Like tell us, tell, tell us that like from a blank slate 101. I've never heard of you. Yeah, so uh, grew up playing baseball since, that age, since I was two years old. That's all I ever wanted to be. Um, Achieved that dream in 2015 when I made my major league debut with the White Sox on opening day. Uh, ended up playing seven years. Um, retired in 2018. About in 2016, I got traded to the Dodgers um, is when I really found my my passion in life. And that was, mm. um, unbeknownst to me at the time, was painting and, and, and art um, by my manager asking me uh, what I'd like to do. And I told him I like to paint. I got really nervous. Um, and I did a paint sip class right before spring training and I didn't want to say I played piano because he had made another kid play piano uh, in front of the whole team and so I just said paint uh, he made me do a painting it was my first paintings uh, ever and uh, the whole team not the whole team but the guys I cared about you know uh, said, said they liked it and um, and ever since then I fell in love with art retired in 2018 um, and 
realized that nobody cared about my art anymore once I was not the baseball player uh, artist <laughs> and uh, needed to make money and discovered uh, crypto art and, and, and crypto in general in 2019. Um, released my first NFT in 2020. Um, my nephew at, at that around that time asked if astronauts could be black. And so I was just painting him as an, as an astronaut uh, on a canvas in my garage. Uh, and what I would do, would, I would animate these and taught myself how to animate in rudimentary and, and after effects um, and add voice to it and uh, release those as NFTs in early 2020. Um, sold my first one, I think it was for three ETH. At that time, it was 900 bucks. I, said, I've hit, I just hit the lottery uh, <laughs> and, and fell in love with the way that, that the community was able to rally behind what I wanted to say with my art, my message and my art. Um, leverage those the, the, the success in the NFT space to um, get into the physical art world, uh, you know, galleries and, and, and art angels at LA and, and we just, just left Art, art Miami, had, had a piece down there. Um, and, you know, I had, I had a, a couple of successful shows, you know, on the heels of my NFT debut. Um, and in 2021, released Aku, which I think most people know me for uh, at this point. Um, which is uh, a digital character I released as an NFT in 2021. Hold on, hold on. Listen, okay, wait, wait. A couple things for you, man. That's that's a great that's a great story. It's a great story, but I have a lot of questions about it. <laughs> if you have to give that to me in like 15 seconds, you know what I mean? Like, what well, how do you, what is your like? How do you like self define? Because even even I struggle with this, right? Because like I used to make like TV commercials and stuff, but now you beat people at a party. They're like, what do you do? And I'm just oh, like, I don't. Uh, I Oh, I just You're just an artist. artist. Okay, yeah, I did a blanket. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. I'm an artist. Okay, 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 okay. And then if they want to know more, like, then oh, this guy's yeah, yeah. Because then they're like, oh, this guy's not doing shit with his life. He's just a starving <laughs> artist. And they leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the thing. It's like right now, it's like if you throw out like crypto or NFTs, especially right now, people are like, Bleh. like people are like, I don't want to. Like, they don't tell you about you know, I'm not interested. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or they'll tell you about the one NFT they heard about, and they'll yeah. ask you if they should mint it or something like that. Uh, like I've got a buddy right now who's like, "Are you gonna go for this Tim Ferriss cock punch thing?" And I'm like, "I don't know. Like I'm not on the list. I'll see what's up with it, you know." And he's like, "Man, I can't wait." And I'm like, "Sure, you know. Like I don't know. But if you want it, if you want it, get it. I don't. I, I, don't, I, I don't have any advice." Um, okay, let's flash back to what you're saying. You're playing on the Dodgers uh, as Dave Roberts was manager at the time, right? I think. Yeah, he was. Right? Yeah, first year. So, first year. so, wait, so what is is this like a hazing kind of thing where he's like, "All right, let's get the rookies to come up and do like a show, and they have to make up a talent." Like, what's the deal with that? No, it was just the way it was his way of breaking in new guys. Um, okay, basically. So, so up to that point, you know, a guy, a kid would come up and be like, oh, "I'd like to fish." And be like, "Okay, Kershaw, you go f take this kid fishing." You know, just a, a team bonding <laughs> thing, you know. Um, and that's kind of how it went down. Okay, okay, okay. So that and then he brought you up, and you didn't know what to do. Like you just made it up on like you just you just improvised and said I like to paint. Yeah, man. And he was like, "Great, go make a you gotta make a painting of Maury Wills." And Maury Wills uh, just passed away, right. an amazing guy. Um, yeah, but I would eat breakfast and bunt with him every morning. So like six a.m. Uh, every morning okay. we would bunt. Uh, right. Like every morning he had to teach me how to bunt. And I was like, <laughs> like the most rudimentary thing. But every morning you, I had to sit there and listen. He, you know, put your hand here. But it's just something we did, and we spent every every morning together. And so made the painting of Maury Wills. Right. And how? Just tell me about the experience. Like how 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 long did it take you to make the painting? Because that, that's like for a lot of people, what you're describing is like people's worst nightmare, mm -hmm. where they're just like, listen, okay, you have to stand up in front of everybody. And I mean, already you're you're already in the majors. You know, you're already you know you don't have that much performance anxiety. Let's call it. But to to perform is something that you've never done. It's like a lot of people, like people have a recurring nightmare where they're on stage and everyone's watching them, right? So it's like, how was that for you to like to have to paint that? And was the and was the painting good? Uh, no, painting was absolutely terrible. It was really terrible. I okay. used like yeah. the right. same paint you would get like your three year old from Walmart and like, <laughs> uh, like the little like, kit, the little plastic yes, kit with the yes, different ones. Exactly yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. I used, and it would just That's it awesome. would just like mud. Um, <laughs> And you know, it was it was it terrifying? I don't I don't really have that in me where like I'm I'm going to be embarrassed by something because like right. it is what it is, man. I gave I I worked hard at it. As long as I worked hard at it, I know I'm good. Like like you can't knock me. I tried it, man. You know. Right. Um. So I I, I would not I, I worked maybe two weeks on it. Um, okay. And and presented it to the team, and then and then got sent down to AAA right after oh. that. So I think. It was... <laughs> oh, I thought I for some reason I assumed it was like a live painting. 
No, no. Oh, no, he no, was no. he was like he was no, like no, I no. got you some I got you a brush and an easel. We're all gonna watch. Like, <laughs> no, no, we were trying. They, they, okay. I, we were trying to win a World Series that year, man. <laughs> they have time to watch. Well, I don't know. I don't do. I don't, I don't know what the success. Maybe that's the secret sauce, man. Is like even just bring the even Kershaw has to do something that he's not used to in front of the whole team. You know who knows who knows what the I don't know, I don't know how it works. You know, um, right? On. What was your actually? So you were working on bunting at the time. Was that like if you tell us a little bit more about you as a baseball player? Actually, before we talk about you as an artist, uh, what were you? What were you? What were you best at? What what parts of your game were, were lacking? Like how did that? How does is that how you self evaluate? Tell us more. Yeah, I could fly. I was really fast. Um, right. Really, really fast, and I think I think one year I stole eighty four bases. Um, right, okay. That was my thing, and I could hit, um, and I was just super competitive. So hard to strike right. out, hard to get out. I was just gonna always try to beat you. Um, right. Where I lacked was defense. Um, mm. A lot of balls through the wickets, man. A lot of just zoning out and and not paying attention on defense. Um, and that's where it hurt, man. That's where that's where the, it, it got me was the defense side. But could always hit and, and, and always fast and and strong. I was almost forty pounds heavier when I played than I am now. Oh shit! Really? Oh, my <laughs> God. PED free okay, there. Right on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't muscle. It was beer. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it was definitely muscle, man. But just no, no artificial. Yeah. Now I just don't work out and I just work all the time. And web, I mean, web three, man. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah that's it yeah yeah it's the long days uh right out okay thanks for, thanks for that synopsis and um you know very <laughs> cool to, to have somebody who was in the show you know on our show i think that's really cool and mm. and and uh, actually a few different questions for you from this point um i do want to talk about your nfts and kind of like your art and, and how you kind of self-evaluate because you already told us about your your, your terrible maury wills uh painting but i want to ask actually since you've kind of made this transition we've had um you know tommy wilson he's also yeah. an nft artist yeah um i, I, you know, I got and, tommy and, into it Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you, oh, you told, that's what I was going to ask is like, how do you, uh, 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 what's that through line in terms of like other uh, former pros kind of trying to get it, you know, get into their artistic side and kind of ringing you up for advice. How does that work? Like, how do you kind of fit into that transition? There's only somebody, there's such a unique story, right? Yeah. I mean, there hasn't been too many. There hasn't been too many guys looking to like yeah. really pursue their, their art career, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Tommy was just one that was doing it, and and and, and Matt Matt Caesar was another one um, that that were actually doing art. Um, so that, there wasn't too many yeah. um, that have kind of like hit me for a, a advice on art. What do, what do most what do most guys end up doing if they're if they're retiring? Like, what are they are they going back to school? Or are they looking to like kind of like kickstart into a new career? Like, how does that work in terms of? I think like, that's okay. the toughest thing for people to yeah to do the yeah. transition because a lot of like so if you're a if you're a civilian, right, and you don't play sports your entire life, right? Yeah. Baseball, like any professional athlete, spends their entire life. Like, like you know, you, you didn't just pick up a, a, a baseball bat when you were 15. You played since you were three, and that's all you did. You yeah. don't, you don't learn the skill sets that everybody else learns. So once the game spits you out, like you, you have to learn about taxes, and you have to learn about corporate structure. You have to learn about all these different things that you just never had to learn. Cause you usually had, you know, at that level, let's say at that level, you have people around you that are handling finances and shielding you from, you know, the, the, the real world in a way. And so I think that's the toughest thing when you, when you come out and you, it is figuring out what, what's the next thing. I think some people do go back to school. Some people uh, get into broadcasting, coaching, um, right. different things here and there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, man, if uh, if you think you have to readjust the taxes, don't worry. Everybody, every other DJ had to do the same thing the last two years and relearn, <laughs> relearn how to do taxes uh, when you've got uh, some uh, somewhat larger events uh, on your on your on your uh, your, I guess, role or whatever it is you're, you're on your on your return uh, this year. This year will have some big uh, potentially some big losses for people. Yeah, so yeah, right. <laughs> uh, everyone's getting that crash course right now, uh, at least in our circles. Uh, so you were talking about. You know, you tell us your Maury Wills painting uh, took you two weeks. You did it with your Walmart set. You weren't very happy with it. How, but but you were also telling us, you know, and I really admire this, that you don't really have that performance anxiety. You don't really worry about what are people going to think or whatever. How has that how has that kind of adapted for you as an artist? And I'll, I'll tell you, for me, as like a content creator, man, it's like I'm putting out a show or two per week. 
I'm putting out some Twitter threads and stuff, and like literally a few nights per week, I like have trouble sleeping because I'm like, what if people think my mm. pod was stupid this week? And that's like, and people are always like, we love the podcast. Oh, thanks for doing it. You know, and I know that that's not a problem, but like still that kind of rears its head for me. So it's like, for, you know, as somebody, it's like, and you, 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 you do fewer pieces and they're all like vested into, you know, that's your, that's this, your living is these pieces and, and, and getting them out there. What is that like for you, you know, kind of preparing for that and, and especially going from Maury Wills painting for Dave Roberts to now, you know, being having collections on the cover of Time magazine? Yeah, I'll tell you what, art is sensitive. Like content creation, anytime you're putting out, you're, you're putting an output out for public consumption, it is it is tough because you do worry about naturally what people, the reaction of people, right? But like the one thing I told myself was like, Literally, if you're working at something, like there's nothing. If you you put it, if you made you know a thread or you made a video that you really, you know, you know, you put the time and preparation into, mm -hmm. like that's all you can do at that point. Well, however people react, um, is is on them. And I think I think you get that performance anxiety when you when you're not prepared. When you when you when you know, when you're in the back of your mind, like man, I probably could have done this a little bit better. I probably could have taken my time more. I think that's when the prep the the anxiety hits. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> just like trying to be better at putting out quality work is what kind of how I look at it. Like when I'm you non know, prepared and it falls flat, it falls flat. And like I didn't prepare. It's like I don't I don't blame anybody if they don't like something I didn't I didn't work for. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. How did you uh let's let's talk about the rest of the story then. So it's like you went you went from doing Maury Wills. What was next after that? Like what did actually did Dave like it? Did they like it? And then I got sent to AAA like the next day, man. I don't. <laughs> maybe, like, I was kind of balling too. So, to be honest with you, I, it might have been the painting. I was doing my thing a little bit. <laughs> now, that you, now that you mention oh, it, man. this event, Dave, maybe Dave Roberts knew he was like, "This guy's got talent with a paintbrush. Let's yeah. get him out of here." You just accelerate his path to to being a you know a high level artist. <laughs> it's gonna help you out. What no, but really, what'd you do next? Like you're like, okay, this is kind of half decent. Maybe I should keep doing this. Like, how does that work? Yeah, man, that was it. It was like, like, I believe that like, uh, I believe that like the the power of like people like reinforcing like your confidence. So like mm -hmm. those teammates, maybe it was like five or six of them coming up to me and be like, man, this is really good. Mm -hmm. Like that was enough for me to to like say, okay, like I really want to push this baseball's not going to last forever like so like what's the next thing i'm going to do I, like, this is going to be it if, if, if i'm good now and i and i put the same work in that i that i put in while playing baseball it's going to eventually work and so that rest of the year i was carrying canvases on the bus and, and painting in the hotel rooms and that off season i lived in la and i had like the an apartment or a condo or a house whatever it was a condo and i remember like new year's eve you know la dodger whatever i was painting in my room by myself I just and I would go to the studio in uh, my friend's studio every morning like knock on the door like can I come in and, and, yeah. and work and so hmm. I would just continue to work on it and then once I retired it was done like I was not making any money I had like I think I printed off like a, a zero on my tax return for two years straight uh, and just painted in my garage non-stop in my garage in, in Raleigh North Carolina uh, just working um, so it wasn't like some like glamorous success thing. I went from 2018 until fall of 2020. So nearly three yeah. years, not making any money. Uh, right. Had a baby, did the whole thing. Um, right. I didn't make any money. How, no recognition, what, nothing. What, what were you, what were, uh, during that time, were you hoping that it would, it could be a living for you? Cause that's I a lot of hoping. time. I knew it would be, there was no hope. Oh, you did. Like, okay. So you knew you do that with confidence. You're like, I'm going to be able to do this. And yeah. This there was gonna, not a, like a, pay off. Okay. Oh man, I hope this works out. Well, if it does, it was like, no, like I'm going to, I'm putting the hours in and I, and I've seen it work. Like I've right. seen, it took me, it took me 21 years to make it to the major leagues. If you count all the little leagues and the high school and college and travel mm -hmm. ball. So I knew that like the work that I put in to get there, I was good to, to keep going. Um, mm. I knew it eventually eventually work like it like it's it's inevitable i really think that's for anybody like anybody if if, if i said tomorrow like okay go yeah, you quit everything you're doing you're going to be in the olympics for archery right and you dedicated every day hours a day to archery you're going to do it like Fuck. Yeah, i don't know when good. but eventually it'll pay it'll, it'll, it'll do it it's a good idea that'd be pretty cool i've actually often thought about 
like what Olympic sports you could still get into. You know, what I mean? like you don't need to have trained since you were a, like, and I was actually thinking like bobsledding is actually, because I have Canadian, right? I mean, Canada and bobs. we have like, there's good Canadian bobsledders. I've often yeah, thought I'm like, I have strong legs. I have strong legs. And it's like, literally, you just have to learn to like, you know, I saw cool runnings. Like you just, you learn to push and run and jump in. And like, that's it. So it's like, maybe I could, fuck, maybe I could be in the Olympics, man. I think like, it'd be, I think it'd be fast. Cause I think Ludlow Jones did join the bobsledding team. I think you got to have some kind of thing there. I think it's harder than what I, it looks. Well, dude, listen, you just talked about encouragement from friends and then told me to go be an archer. And I told you I want to be a bobsledder. You tell me that I can't. I can't do like, it. What the hell? Well, you Come are on, Canadian. Man. Man. Maybe, maybe you know, you haven't just... seen you haven't seen my lower body. Like you don't know what I look like. You don't know that I don't, I don't have these like huge trunks down there, man. That's like just massive. Point, man. I really don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't Canadian I, people grow up playing like show. hockey. We just play hockey like like a, like sweat camp hockey for like years. You know, so it's just like maybe you know we have like naturally these like we have these legs right. like, push on ice, right? So maybe maybe I could do it. Um, I'll I'll go. let you know. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, here's a question for you. If you, if you, if, if there's any type of athlete, it's an abstract question because there's not a lot. If you, if you had to pick like one style of athlete, like from one sport that you think would make the best NFT artist, who, who would that be? Or just artists in general? Like what type of like athlete training mentality that what kind of people are like, oh, these guys are freaks. So they'd make good artists. You know what I mean? Like what, who would that be? The whole spectrum of artists or alternate question soccer soccer soccer, soccer you think of soccer players be good artists uh Why? good nft good NFT, good nft nft artists nft what do you call them nft releasers nft releasers oh, and i say that and what i mean by that they could they soccer players have the ability to understand how to like monetize a brand monetize mm. their brand their personal brand right mm-hmm. in a way that like some sports don't have basketball for sure does too. And, but yeah. NFL guys wear a helmet all day. So like, they not, you don't yeah, see that many NFL guys, yeah, baseball know, guys yeah. relatively for the most part, super chill guys. We're going to go home to our family, keep it moving. Soccer mm-hmm. players make money, a lot of money off the field. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that they could come in, mm-hmm. know how to market themselves. Cause I think that's the majority of what it is when it comes to NFTs. Cause there's so much competition. You got to be able to like market yourself. Mm-hmm. I think soccer players, you think NFTs could integrate with sports in that way? Like, could like Messi scores a goal and he runs off, you know, he runs to the sideline, he pulls up his shirt and he's got like a QR code and he's like, scan this right now to get an NFT. Like, is there, like, you see something like that happening over time, like where it's like directly integrated on the field. We're still pretty far away, right? There's like NFT tickets for games right now. But it's like, do you see some kind of, and I'm just thinking early Top Shot days when we were there, you know, at one point, like Rudy Gobert was like, Top Shot that shit, you know, like on, on the court. And it was like, oh, here we go. Like, they're going to start yelling it at each other. And it hasn't happened since. Like, you see some kind of integration there? Um, yeah, I mean, I do. I think it's when it when it makes sense, when it's not like just NFTs, you know, when it's like, oh, this mm-hmm. this messy showing this and I scanned it and I got that right no idea what it is like he could legitimately do that tomorrow and you get like a t-shirt or something you know um ftx might have messed that up for some of us man because the dude they were on the they're on umpires uniforms man like oh my god they were on the field this this this, we've been here before (laughs) oh my god man how does that make you feel as somebody who's like you know you you, you're you're building this community in the space i mean i'm I'm not too affected by it but i mean give me your thoughts Mike. it's something it's something so hard to uh, ignore the last month like your thoughts on your on the the that's a tough one man you know i have um a pretty good relationship over there and with you know some of their people and they've done they've supported us in the past um Mm. and they've worked their ass off um to accomplish some of the deals they've done um and to to have that happen to not only affect so many people but to affect people internally who have put their their name out there reputation hustling to get some amazing deals done i still like i'm close with people on the mlb side i'm still close with people on the ftx side I thought the MLB MLB deal on uniforms and and, and in stadiums was was a inc- really good deal. I thought that was really impressive, yeah. um, and and the people that brought that together really innovative. So to see what the the, the trickle down effects of a few uh, just people who just don't have regard for other humans uh, yeah. is 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 really upsetting, um, because. Yeah. They, they 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 didn't they weren't longing for anything. They had it all. 
You know, they yeah. there was no need to, to go and do the things they've done. And I'm not like an expert on the matter by any means, but just from a human level, a lot of people were affected in a way um, that just just wasn't necessary. It just wasn't necessary. Like mm-hmm. you, they're they're you got it. Just wasn't necessary. And that's kind of how I I view it from a, just a, a practical perspective. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. What are you? How how are you feeling right now? Because I mean, two years ago you launched your first piece, and I remember that because this was before I had first mint or anything like that, and I was kind of you know looking around the space, and I remember reading your story. Um, and, and I think the, the piece is like generative, right? Like the door opens over time or they change your nephew changes over time in the piece. Two years ago. Yeah. yeah, Fall 2020. Yeah. It wasn't my first one, but that was, that was the one. one. Right. Yeah. 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 That was, um, matter of fact, I was just on the phone with, with them right before this with, with, with async, um, um, I really liked that work and that'll probably go down as one of my, um, most important works just from like not only uh, yeah. from 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 concept to execution to the meaning behind it to what it to to the the boys that were involved like um everything across the board worked and that's not always always the case very rare that like from somebody you have something that kind of elaborate that it works across the board um that was a, a big that was a, a very important piece that i think was before its time like i don't think it got no one knows about it. Like, like they said, oh, that's the Aku guy. But it's like, man, I'll be honest with you. Aku's amazing and an incredible character that has a lot of impact. But that piece is actually really, really um, special. How do you how do you see your different art pieces and collections? Uh, like, how do you visualize that? Because I'm not I'm not a visual artist that way. Like, do you do you see them? Are they like d- different flavors? Are they like different children you have? Like, are they like different cars in a garage? Like, how do how do you how do you visualize that as an artist in terms of like you know either comparing them or or, or quantifying their success or even just how you, your own feelings? Um, so taking Aku aside, Aku's a full on like uh, brand company thing, right? Uh, and then you have like the art side and. When it comes to art, um, like I think about, I think about there's there's pieces that you just make, right? That good pieces, whatever. There's others that like you make that you can't hit a home run every single time, right? right. Um, there's some that just don't work. So when you have those special moments that hit, like that's when like I don't know, they're really they're really special, you know. And and I'm like I care about every single one of them because every one there's a there's a process involved to them, you know. Mm-hmm. So so. Okay, well, okay. I'll ask you a harder question then, Micah. They're all they're all those pieces only live like as as physical. There's no there's no NFT, or they're all NFTs, but they're all on ledgers or something like that. The house is on fire. You can only take one with you. Which one is it? Um, I mean, to be honest, Aku. Be- <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why Aku. Aku's on ledgers, all that, because yeah. Aku has the ability to reach more people than right. a piece could like aku can show up and manifest himself in different like if aku all the paintings everything is in a pile in ledgers and paintings were in a pile i would have to take aku because he has the ability to expand out <laughs> got it okay how do you are you are you actively still working on aku now like what are you what are you currently doing in you terms of what, in my eyes? <laughs> well i don't know i don't i don't know what you're because you're taking you're talking to async uh, like, are you currently working on Aku? And if yes or no, are, is there is there is there another big hit coming in the future? Uh, yeah, no, Aku is like full focus. That's the uh, thing. That's the thing. Okay. Yeah, because it's super early in the, in, in, the, in the terms of like IP, right? Super right. early. Like IP takes forever to you, as you know, like to develop and produce and all these yeah. things. And then once you produce it and it's developed, and then you have. The marketing and then you have products etc like there's a long tail game with with any kind of ip um so like but the, but the thing about the aku side is it's a scaled out team if that makes sense so you have we've scaled that team out really nicely um which allows me to also think about other things like other other releases other projects that i want to do and that's kind of how it how it works out um so right now we're in a phase of spent the last couple about two months on like what's the 2023 plan and, and roll out for for everything um, right but as a creative like you don't want to aku it's all comes from a story bible that story bible can be here's the bible like you follow this and you can pass that to people that know how to 
then execute across different the different verticals um and then i can oversee on the on the creative side of things and you know and in and, and, and different kind of uh, areas of that i don't need to be involved on the, the day-to-day business side how, how did you how did you scale that how did you how did you decide like because you you know you're in your garage for three years painting and painting painting every day you're starting to make pieces starting to get it out there confident you're going to do it who, like who, how do you do you have a manager what's the first step to that up until now tell us about your team yeah so it's a uh, scaling is the hardest thing to do it's harder than raising money it's harder than creating making money scaling is the hardest thing because yeah. you 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 want quality people and you don't always get quality people out the gate you know you don't know the business and the landscape will change in six months and this vertical over here might take off and this one falls back uh so for me kind of how i i scale that is i went very um intentionally early on the business side of things understanding what is needed to ensure that the business side is bundled up from structure legal operations all those pieces are smooth and and, and so like the, the house the foundation of the house is good and then we scale the creative and the way the creative scaling works is whenever there's a bigger project that we need to do like akutars for example can scale to we scale to 50 um creators right mm -hmm. um and so <clears throat> the phase i'm at now is thinking more so around scaling uh based around more more project-based releases instead of having to like i think once you scale too big too quickly that's when it gets super difficult to communicate and and do what you did best getting there and right. so i'm at the stage now of like i've done it scaled the teams orchestra managed dozens of people and i'm at the stage now where it's like actually i got this really good idea we should do this release you know um with x y and z who are the people we need for that specific thing so they could be hyper specific on the on that and i think that's kind of how i'm looking at moving forward how to how to scale this properly mm -hmm. who's who's the most important per person working on it or not most important that's not, that's not fair to the rest of the team but like who's who's kind of like what what is your kind of like core central team and, and i'm actually you don't have to name them i'm just curious like how you organize that like how like how much time do you spend you working on art coming up with ideas versus meetings because i could imagine it's like you know you're trying to scale up you're being this business you commercialize it which is fantastic but gonna be you know you're gonna have to say no a lot to people trying to involve you in all these meetings so you keep doing you as the artist but how do you you know who, who, who how do you organize that core team of people you know man transparently i was it was full business for the past once aku hit boom Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, now everybody's saying this is, has to be this, this could be that, this has yeah. potential to be Disney, you got to scale it this way, this has potential to be right. this, right? So you're getting all this information. It's like, okay, cool, this is what we're going to do. But over time, I realized that like being involved in all these meetings and hustling doesn't mean it's necessarily going to yield the results of, uh, first of all, like it's not going to yield the results that, you know, driving value back to the community all the time because now you're 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 just worried about scaling and managing people generating revenue revenue that matches the burn like so if you're doing all these things and the creative takes a back seat then like then i think that's when it, you, you run into trouble and so yeah recently i was like okay actually what I, what i want to do is get the, the the organization structured around more creative and so what what do, let's just talk creatively and creative not only just like art it's more like mechanics releases like the chapters for example was creative here's aku chapters here's how they're going to work here's how they're going to roll out here how they'll play in a bigger part right um and, and getting back to that so like the team you know you have the business side which is important like you know you making sure that finances and all that are in, in order then you have you know head of web3 making sure all that is 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 buttoned up and in order and communication is clear and crisp and is professional um, is very important. Then you have the creative team, small, you know, we, mm -hmm. we jam, like we don't, there's no, just, we jam, um, head of partnerships. What do you mean? What do you mean you jam? What is jamming? What does jamming look like? Yesterday. What do you guys, what do you guys do? Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday we got a, uh, we're doing a rollout with, with Instagram, right. And it's an evolution right. of storytelling works, right? Boom. We're jamming through concept art, jamming through ideas, jamming through, uh, story plots, storylines, and it's just, just, just jamming on on the creative concepts. Um, 
and then we have that you know head of partnerships because you do have a lot of opportunities and we've had incredible partners that we work with who who can parse through opportunities that may not be aligned or that are aligned and and make sure that those go smoothly um so it's, it's a really really well oiled kind of machine right now hmm. what's your creative process right now then when it's time like you've been tra traveling you're doing uh talking appearances you're having business meetings and then you're like no you know and then the next thing on the agenda is like all right micah you got to go to the studio and you have to go make this thing you come up with this concept you got to make this next visual how does that start early mornings man early mornings mm -hmm. so i'm on east coast right and so yep. five in the morning six in the morning the first thing i do is is output um hmm. like i don't try to look at anything like right. uh don't try to like do anything output like if it's if i'm in a mode where i'm having to having to paint and i have a show coming up straight to the studio right. right now we're in a mode of like story and story development straight to writing you know um and then and then i make sure that i get all my necessary tasks done you know if there's something going on and we have a bunch of emails responding to the emails just early in the morning mm -hmm. and then meetings hit you know west coast gets up whatever then you do the meetings kind of like in the afternoon like right now i'm in a block for like five hours but i i'm good i got my creative juices out this morning you're done yeah it's out it's done yeah the most important part's done yeah yep that's kind of how i work i can't do late nights anymore i, I, I can't what's the goal for the project right now like what how do you and i'm sure maybe that's changed over time but like what is for aku like what is what is the what are the hardline kind of goals or okrs that you guys have set out you know you're talking about your own map 2023 can you share any of that with us or even kind of longer term? Yeah, so the goal the goal was in for 2023 is really to build audience. So it's not about necessarily building community as much as it's about building audience. And I think there's a big difference here. So like in 2022, focus in, in 2020, you focus on building community. Different initiatives that can onboard a core group of people into the Aku ecosystem through NFTs, right? we have an incredibly core, incredible core group. Now the, now we have to expand the IP out to the kids and the people that can consume Aku from that, that uh, places where they already are. So a lot of the 2023 focus is on, is on audience building, where it's not an emphasis on necessarily revenue. We don't need to generate NFT revenue that we've seen in the past. It's more about how can you build an audience um, and, then, and then story development. So that when we were ready to go into story in Q1, you know, uh, and actually go, like we're gone, you know, um, and so that's really that's really the goal for, for for that is is the expansion the expansion of the audience. What do you what do you want your legacy to be in the space as an artist? Most important thing is quality, like thoughtfulness, quality, and professionalism. Like mm -hmm. that's that's really that it's really that simple. I don't want to. Uh, do anything that um, is 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 not necessarily the highest of qualities. I want to make sure that it's thoughtful and that it's and it, every from top to bottom is rolled out in a way that she needs to be rolled out. Mm -hmm. um, and and that it was never about the trying to capture a hype cycle. It's just more so thoughtfulness. What do you? What do you? This is all. Then I'm just like asking you like like personal. Like it's almost like a dating profile questions. What do you, <laughs> where, where where do you see yourself in 20 years? Mm. Good question. Um, still making things. Still making things. Aku's Aku's a full on character that every kid knows around the world, and we're still making making things. Who knows what, mm -hmm. what technology will be out there? But I'm, I know I'm gonna be making something with it. Ooh, yeah. If you if you had to do something that wasn't painting, like a tomorrow, they're just like you're not allowed to paint anymore for whatever paint's, reason. Paint's, paint's gone. It's rare. <laughs> it's there's some reason like painting painting is outlawed, and it's like if you paint, there's a, it's like you have to. They said like like it's like there's something wrong with you in society if you if you're a painter. Like we find out that there's some you're like a serial killer too, or something like something like horrible. So you have to, you're like I can't paint anymore. What's what do you what would you be doing? And, and and Aku too, like like, uh, it can you can take the IP and make it something else, but it cannot. It, 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 no more brushes, and you you can't yeah, say like, like you're gonna use pastels or anything like that. Like there's no, no more I drawing would... or any of that kind of stuff. Like that the visual anything of like a blank page and you're making something on it that's gone. But a lot of other creative fields. 
would definitely grow out, continue growing Aku, obviously, and building that whole the whole IP. But what, in what? In what? What would it? What would it become? Oh yeah, we'd be going across like right the same path. We're right now. We're building out the TV, building out the film, building out the experiences and the products and the apparel and uh, immersive experiences. Um, so around around Aku still virtual experiences. I mean, so around Aku still. Uh, but like, let's just say there was no creativity. Like, actually, you know you what? I'm just I'm just gonna creative. remove the question. It's just like you know what? You never went to paint. Dave Dave Roberts never asked you to paint. I'd be a farmer. That n- you're a farmer. Okay, yeah. I just ask you what other job you would have. That's you'd farmer. be a farmer. Farmer. Okay. Do you do you grow anything right now? Do you grow vegetables or anything at home? Yeah, yeah, but not okay. Not what I want to do. I want to like farming is my thing. So like. Farming cows. is your thing. I love farming. You grew up farming? Uh, I worked on, my family did, and I worked on a dairy farm. Oh, so, really? Okay. Okay. So you're, you're you, oh shit. So you're, you're a cow, you're a cow milker really by trade. Like it's <laughs> baseball's secondary career. <laughs> <laughs> Milking cows. Is just, that's where yeah, it's I used to, I used to, um, I used to work on this dairy farm and I would have to go there like at 430 in the morning or something. Um, wow. And then I would, I would, cause I, I just needed money. Like I didn't have any money. Then, yeah. then my mom would pick me up. I didn't have a driver's license or anything in high school. And then my mom picked me up and take me to baseball games. So I would work all day on the farm huh. and then take my dirty clothes, change in the car, go play a baseball game. That's what I did. Dude, that's such like a classic story. Honestly, <laughs> like I feel like I've read that novel. Just like, yeah, you're just ex- up at 430 milking the cows <laughs> off to the off to the fr- or like whatever. What's it like the Arnold Schwarzenegger story? It's like he was like training in the army for like 12 hours a day. And then at night would like drive for like walk eight hours to the gym to work out for three hours and then sleep for an hour and restart the next day. I feel like that that's you. <laughs> that's how I used to be. That's how I used to be. Man. <laughs> Smelled terrible. <laughs> I remember one time a girl, a, a, I went to, I went to meet a girl afterwards one time, and she told me she, she couldn't hang out with me because I smelled. So after bad. both those things, like no, you milked the cows after and the farm. <laughs> after the farm, <laughs> <laughs> told me to leave. <laughs> oh man, that's amazing, man. Well, yeah. I mean, good for you. That's, I mean, it definitely de- developed a lot of good work ethic in you. Yeah, no, right. Definitely. Like that's 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 some that's some hard labor, right? So that's uh, that's good if you were yeah. doing that from an early age. Right on. Well, uh, Mike, I won't keep you for too much longer. I guess the last question for you is um, right now, you know, uh, NFTs, we're, we're, we're in a harder spot than we were before. Obviously, it's a, you know, we're kind of going through this transition year period. Still a lot of people building and a lot of great projects like you um, that have put out their collections now, clearly doing a lot behind the scenes we're going to see. Uh, if you had some advice for a creator, for an artist who, who wants to start now right who who maybe let's let's assume that they've been painting in a garage or some equivalent for a couple of years they've been training they're ready to go they've got the talent and they just want to get out there uh as a as a painter as a podcaster or as whatever what what would, what are your three pieces of advice for them starting just get just do it just get it out like why wait for the market like just get it out um the market just get it out like who cares what yeah. the price of eth is it doesn't matter right like get it out um, network, talk, talk to people, but network in a way, this is very important. Don't network in a way where it's like, give me everything you got. Give me all your information. This is what I'm working on. Like actually come from a networking perspective of like trying to understand that person better. Like don't come trying to pitch them on something or mm-hmm. selling your art. Actually just trying to just understand how that person's moving or, um, trying to just just talk to them about their experiences instead of just right. so salesy um right. and then three would be just to um be authentic don't won't worry about what what collections are working or what art artists are working or you know who's doing well be authentic to you because that's not sustainable eventually you know, people not people don't resonate resonate with that Beauty. So I love network, that. shill. Don't, I mean, network, don't shill. <laughs> uh, just get your work out there. <laughs> wow. Wow. <Freudian> slip. <laughs> okay. Last, last question for you. Usually at the end of the show, we play a game called Would You Rather. We haven't played in a while. So, uh, and I only have one question for you. It's baseball related because we already got, we already got a lot of great artist stuff from you, but um, actually it's kind of intertwined. So this is a Would You Rather question. So I'll give you two options. Okay. It's, it's it's 5 a.m. Time for you to you just woke up and it's time for you to just lay it down on the canvas. Feeling pumped. But there's a problem. There's a challenge you have to overcome before you're allowed to paint. Would you rather that challenge be 
that you have to steal six bases or you have to bunt off Kershaw. Oh, shoot. That's like, what, a, what an incredible Success, Successfully bunt. Successfully bunt. Like, you have to make... First, first you got to get near... You got to have to, like, be like... Have the ball to, so like, step in front of his fastball. And then... And, <laughs> and hope it doesn't kill you. And then also, like, you got to make it to first. And you have to do either one of those. I don't, I, it sounds like stealing bases is super easy for you, but... I, I, it six was is hard. easy when I was 22 years old. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I guess... So. Civilians don't sprint. I've learned that. Like, yeah. When is the last time a civilian ever reached top speed? It doesn't happen, right? Like, a civilian. I love the term civilian that you use, like like when you're in the military and we're all these, like, civilian. thieves. Like, you're, like, on a foreign mission. <laughs> like, you know a mean, civilian. Like, what are these civilians civilian. doing? Yeah. <laughs> you're just a civilian. civilian. You're, you're slow. You're a civilian. You walk and you get to the play. You get from A to B. Um, <laughs> well, there's zero chance I would still, I'd be able to steal six bases right now. So I'd have to go okay. bunt. I'd have to go bunt. But why that's a good question though. Kershaw being lefty and that herky, herky jerky thing, and that's not fun to bunt off of. No, 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 no. no <laughs> like, it's really hard. I bat, I who's bat left-handed? So who's the hardest? Uh, uh, did you rate catchers in terms of how hard they're they are to steal off oh, of or man, pitchers? Yeah. Kid, I, kid, I, yeah, kid, I grew up with. Actually, we played literally together. Um, okay, he won a Gold Ooh. Glove too. Um, he was, he was like the thing, like we used to, that's a guy, Tucker Barnhart, the guy I always wanted to get. Oh, yeah. And he was, he won a gold glove for a reason. Fine. So he could really gun you down at good second. Hey, yeah. Was, was, oh, every time I was, coach would be giving me the stop sign, like no stealing. Like I gotta do it. I oh, love it. Oh, Micah. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming to the show. I really appreciate it. And best of luck with everything uh, in the new year. Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me.